Hey guys, Jono here. I just wanted to give you a quick anatomy lesson of this iris plant, or oris, as we call it in perfumery. So obviously this is the flower. Um, it is fragrant. It has that soft, sweet iris smell. And as we go down the stalk, underground, it's actually a rhizome plant, uh, similar to ginger, um, to horseradish, to uh, wasabi. And I will show you what that looks like right now. Here we are, up close and personal with the orus. Now, what exactly are we looking at? This is a rhizome, which means it has a horizontal root structure underground, uh, and it looks somewhat similar to ginger, you could see. Um, now, it takes around three to five years to develop a full structure underground, after which it can be harvested, and it has to be harvested by hand. Um, and then it is aged for another three to five years, uh, sliced up and pulverized into a powder, after which it can either be uh, mixed with water and alcohol to form an absolute or steam distilled. Now there are two different types of oris in the world. There's Iris germanica, uh, commonly known as the bearded iris, which can be grown in flower gardens around the world, but is also uh, a high iron varietal of iris, and there's iris polita, uh, which comes from Eastern Europe, uh, specifically the rocky soils along the Mediterranean, and that is higher in a aromatic acid um, known as myristic acid. Now, both of these components are used in perfumery, but they have different, you could call them textures. Uh, Myristic acid, myricidic acid, I should say, uh, is more dewy and floral, whereas irones are uh, definitely creamy, smooth, velvety, and rich. Uh, both smell of iris, but they do have slightly different smells. Um, now, why is oris so expensive? That is because of labor. Uh, it takes, you know, as I said, three to five years to develop underground root structures, it has to be hand harvested, and then it takes another three to five years to dry and age properly to develop irons. Um, all right, now who first introduced this into perfume? Who had the idea? That would be Catherine de' Medici uh, in the Italian Renaissance. He uh, used to pulverize this and mix it with rice powder. And that is the reason why iris is associated with powdery notes. Um, and in fact, it's still used in powders today. You can look behind the perfume counter and there's some oris in those makeups. And that is why iris typically is associated with the smell of makeup. But in reality, it doesn't smell anything like makeup. It smells rich, vanillic, almost honey sweet, uh, buttery, uh, smooth. And that's iris for you. Now in this video, I will go over uh, two perfumes that I happen to love that feature different facets of iris, and both of them happen to be made by Ansarud. All right, let's get started. Hey everyone, so the first perfume I'd like to go over with you uh, is Iris Noir by Ansarud. Now this is a dewy, summery, floral uh, iris that has almost um, some fresh qualities to it. Uh, so. The iris, or oris, I should say, in Iris Noir, I happen to have it in two formats. This is an eau de parfum, and this is an attar, or a molokot. Um, now, the oris in here is from Eastern Europe, and it is high in myristic acid, um, which leads to this dewy quality. Now, I say that the oris is from Eastern Europe, I mean that it's harvested from Eastern Europe. Then it is... Um, extracted uh, and steam distilled uh, in France. Uh, there are some expert uh, oris producers in France that Ansar has sourced this oris from. Um, now Iris Noir uh, focuses around this grounding, dewy aspect of oris, but it has these incredibly fresh and uplifting top notes of uh, mint and honeysuckle um, and rosemary. It's herbal. It's it's almost seductively fleeting. Um, 
And there's also some oud in here. Uh, there is a, I believe it is a Cambodian oud. And in that Cambodian oud adds almost this uh, dark, fruity, incense -y, rich aspect, uh, hence the noir. Uh, now, I wouldn't necessarily call this a noir scent um, in that it is extremely uplifting to my nose. It reminds me of the start of spring, you know, that cool, damp air where there's slight greenery starting to grow, um, the first spring flowers starting to bloom. Uh, you step outside and you get that whiff that the earth is just coming back to life. Um, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, now in the Atar, I definitely get some of those darker aspects. I think the Cambodian Oud really shines in this format. Um, it's definitely darker and more incense-y, but you still get that uplifting quality. Um, now let's talk about the auras in here. I mentioned before that it's dewy, but I also want to add that it is extremely rich and grounding and almost rounding, and it adds a velvety texture to this perfume. Um, right now, this perfume doesn't happen to be available. Um, it is a hard find, but if you can find it, I do recommend it, especially if you love uh, summery or spring-like uh, floral scents. Um, I'd say it's completely unisex. Uh, it doesn't, first of all, I don't think perfume necessarily has a gender, but I don't think that this one is, you know, overly floral or overly sweet. I think it's straight down the middle. Um, it's grounding, it's uplifting. Uh, it's really a mood booster for me. I wear it all the time. Um, you just breathe it in and you feel refreshed, almost like drinking a cup of tea made of fresh crushed spring flowers. Um, I will add that I think the orris in here really completes the composition, uh, and that is why, of course, it's called Iris Noir. Um, now, in the late dry down, you do also get some deer musk. Uh, it is a musk that sort of enhances the orris. I don't think it's overpowering. It's not animalic at all. Um, but it adds a pillowy, sort of creamy, uh, bed-like uh, structure to the dry down that's sort of just alluring and enchanting. Um, this is a perfume that you can wear dressed up, you can wear dressed down. Uh, I tend to reach for it on hotter days because it does have a sort of minty herbal opening. Um, but after that, it really just explodes into this Cambodian oud, iris musk, uh, seductive scent that's just addictive. Uh, all right, let's move on to the star of the show, I think, which is Iris Galia, uh, also by Ansar Oud. Stay tuned. So here we are with Iris Galia. Um, now this is a perfume that has Oris that comes from uh, pretty much the classic uh, source of Oris, and that is Chianti. Um, it is an Italian Oris. Uh, it is, I believe, the Germanica varietal, which is higher in irons, uh, aged for longer, and then again, steam distilled in France. Um, this is a perfume that I believe is a true uh, reimagining of vintage French perfume. Um, the one I associate it with is L'Air Bleu uh, by Guerlain, um, in that it is a purple floral uh, with some fruity aspects and then grounded by musk again. Um, this is definitely on the richer side. Uh, so let's get into the note breakdown. Um, Iris Galia to me opens up with this fruity, juicy burst of peach and black currant. Um, it is just extremely delicious. It's almost gourmand-like. Um, and then almost immediately, uh, it's calmed down by this extremely rich combination of iris, ambergris, and musk. Um, now, Ansar was telling me that this is the hardest perfume for him to have ever composed. It is an impossible balance to strike between fruitiness, between uh, velvetiness from the orris, and then muskiness uh, from uh, musk, ambergris, and uh, also uh, muskrat. 
and hyracium. Um, Ansar told me that uh, the original composition had a much higher proportion of those latter animalics, the muskrat and the hyracium, uh, that he actually decided to remove from the composition uh, because it was a bit too animalic. And that just goes to show you, I think, um, just how difficult of a balance it is to strike. But I think the balance has been struck in that uh, it's immediately uplifting from the fruit and also grounding from the musk. They're, they don't overpower each other. They're in harmony. Um, now into the mid notes, you get more of this creaminess and lusciousness from the high iron uh, orris butter. Uh, and it's it's just extremely, extremely alluring. This is a, a perfume that you're gonna wanna wear on a date. It's a perfume that you're gonna wanna wear out to eat with friends. It's a perfume that if someone catches a sniff of, they're gonna wanna lean in closer. Um, but it's also uh, reminiscent of vintage classics. I mentioned L'Air Bleu uh, because this this is primarily a animalic violet scent. Um, it does have some orris butter in it as well, but I think it, it originates this composition of, you know, fruity floral toned down by musk. And I think that's the perfect balance that Iris Galea strikes. Um, you know, the amber green here is sheer and it, it adds a projection effect, I will say that, uh, but it's never overpowering. I think the main focus in this perfume is always going to be the orris. Um, you smell like you've happened to walk through a fruit patch and fallen into a bed of flowers and then rubbed yourself in the most luscious musk possible. Um, I think this is one of the gems of my collection, uh, something that I will always treasure. Um, as the scent develops, it does pick up some powdery aspects, and that is probably from the orris. Um, and it, it almost, it's like a, a shapeshifter, I would say. It, it, it sort of, you know, you get one whiff of peach one moment, and then you get a whiff of iris the next, and then you get a whiff of musk, and then you just have to lean in closer and get them all together because it's so addictive. Um, the, the comparison with L'Air Bleu, uh, this one definitely focuses more on, on violet, um, but I will say there is some violet qualities in here. It is slightly green. Uh, there's some slight green tonality in the top notes to keep it, you know, uplifting and fresh. Um, but I will say that this is something that I wouldn't recommend in the heat. It's very, very, very strong. Uh, you know, one spray is probably enough to last you the whole day, and it is all natural, which makes it, you know, a miracle that one spray lasts you the whole day. Uh, this will probably last me into morning. <laughs> um, right now, I'm just getting that extreme, rich, vanillic, seductive orris uh, that we all love. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is my first video. I promise there will be more. Um, we'll talk about a lot more of Ansar's uh, products, and we'll also go into some other aspects of natural perfumery. That's my passion. That's what I love. So uh, I plan to do, you know, videos on highlighting compositions of different florals. Uh, we'll talk about rose. We'll talk about jasmine. Uh, we'll talk about citruses. We'll talk about anything that has to do with uh, natural perfume. So stay tuned and thank you very much. Bye-bye.